fellow great mathematicians over there. I am Mrs. Agumbi Ade, a life member of man, here to take you through a revision course on mathematics. And the topic picked is probability. We have learned that probability is just the measure of likelihood of an event occurring or not occurring. And that to calculate the probability of an event, we only need to find the number of required outcome and divide it by the number of total, uh, possible outcome. Now, the probability of an event lies between 0 and 1. It is 0 when it is an impossible event. Like if I say that in a group of 20 boys and 10 girls, one of the people there is pregnant. What, uh, what is the probability that the pregnant person is a boy? Definitely the probability is zero because it has, it's an impossible event. Now it is one when it is, when it is a sure event. If I say that I toss a coin, what is the probability of picking either a, uh, of, uh, having either a head or a tail? Definitely, it, uh, one, one has to come out. One of the two has because a fair coin has a head and a tail. So once I toss one, then definitely one of them will come out. So that one is the sure event. And the probability of that is one. And then we also say that you have, you, you, you have also learned that the probability of an event not occurring is the probability is one minus the probability of that event occurring. We are moving mathematically. Now we go to mutually exclusive events. We have learned that uh, two or more events are said to be mutually exclusive. When the occurrence of one prevents the occurrence of the other. Like I said, the occurrence of one prevents the occurrence of the other. That is, the two of them cannot happen at the same time. What does that one mean? Like uh, if I say I toss a coin, if the head appears, that appearance of, uh, the appearance of head prevents the appearance of the tail. So the two of them cannot occur at the same time. That shows that the two events are mutually exclusive. Now, a mutually exclusive events leads us to additional law of probability. Additional law of probability states that if events A, B, C, and so on, are mutually exclusive. That is, if there are such events that they, they cannot occur at the same time, then it means that the probability of A or probability of B or probability of C and so on equals to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C and so on. Remember that in set theory, you have been told or you have learned, let me put it that way, because your teachers are great, that A union B is equal to A plus B minus A intersection B. In mutually exclusive events, there is no intersection. They cannot occur at the same time. Hence, the A intersection B there is zero. And that is why we are having that probability of a mutually, a mutually exclusive events, probability of A or probability of B occurring is the addition of their separate probabilities. Now, what of if the two events are not mutually exclusive? What happens? Then it will follow the set theory that, will, that then we will now have that if the events are not mutually exclusive, then probability of A or probability of B occurring is going to give us probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. At this junction, I want you to say kudos to your teachers for they have done great work in your lives. Now, having explained mutually exclusive events, the next event to explain is independent events. Now, what are independent, independent events? We say mathematically that when two or more, I mean, two or more events are said to be independent, if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other in any form, 
occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other in any form. Like now in a family, the firstborn is a son. If the uh, uh, mother there is pregnant, it does not, the, 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 the sex of the unborn baby has no, I mean, the, first, uh, the sex of the firstborn has no effect on the sex of the unborn baby. The unborn baby can be a boy, it can be a girl. So the two events are basically independent events. Now, independent events leads us to multiplication law of probability. Our teachers told us, which we learned, that if events A, B, C are independent, then probability of A and probability of B and probability of C will give us probability of A times probability of B times probability of C. Another example of independent events is in the class. A student, is, the, the success of any student does not affect the success of others. Like if Kainde should pass in the class, it doesn't affect Tokwe or Tolu from passing, or I mean from being successful or not. Tolu may pass, Tolu may fail, uh, Joker may pass, Joker may fail. Those events are independent events. The success or failure of one student does not, it has no effect on the success or failure of the other students in the class. At this junction, we go for a short break. Thank you. Welcome back. Now we have learned the, how to find the probability of events. We have learned the mutually exclusive events, the independent events. Now we want to solve questions, examples on probability problems. Now open your, pick out your, I mean, pick your past question booklet. Go to what's say June 2010. We are checking question five. What's say? June 2010, question five. Are you there? What say? June 2010, question five. Two fear dice are thrown. M is the event described by the sum of the scores is 10. The sum of the scores is 10. And N is the event described by the difference between the scores is three. The difference between the scores is three. Now, questions. Write out the elements of M and N. B, find the probability of M or N. And C, are M and N mutually exclusive? If so, and if so not, give your reasons. Now, let us assume that we have two types of dice. We have a black die and a red die. The black die is numbered one to six. You know about fear die, that the one we use to play Ludo. And the red die is numbered one to six. When we throw, we can have one one, that is the red one shows one, the black one shows one. We can have the black to show three, I mean six, and the red to show three. So this is just our sample space. This is our sample space. Now, the first question there, it says, fine, I mean, write out the elements of M and A. Remember, M gives us what? The sum of the scores is 10. Sum of the scores is 10. If you look at this, the maximum sum here is seven. Here is eight, here is nine. The first one we have is 10 here. Four plus six will give us 10. Another one is here, five plus five will give us 10. And another one is here, six plus four will give us 10. Now let me show you this, I'm, I'll come back. 
Welcome back. Now, like I said, the question says we should list out the elements of M and N. And the question recall that, I mean, recall that the question asked us that, I mean, told us that the elements of M are that the addition of the two, the, the, the numbers on the two dice, that the addition, the sum is 10. Now, like I said, we found 10 here. That is one. So that is first comma six. Another 10 here, five comma five. And another 10 here, six comma four. So we found four, three elements for M. Now, N, we are told that gives the difference of the two numbers on the dice is three. Difference is three. Difference means minus. Now, this one, the difference here is zero. Two minus one, one. Difference here, three minus one, two. Four minus one, three. So this is one of the elements of N. Five minus one is four. Six minus one is five. So we are, we get a difference of three again. This is two, five. Two comma five, we have it here. We are again, we are moving, we are moving. This is another one, very interesting. So that's three comma six. Here, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you? Oh, I have seen, have you seen one? Me, I have seen one, no. Four comma one. This is it. Then the next one is, mm -hmm, yes, five comma two. This is it. And the last one here is six comma three. So these are the elements of M and N. And the B part of the question asks us to find the probability of M or N. Probability of M or N. Now, remember, M and N, they are mutually exclusive events. Because if the sum is 10, definitely the difference cannot be 3. So the occurrence of one prevents the occurrence of the other. So M and N are mutually exclusive events. So the probability of M or N is going to give us the addition, the sum of their separate probabilities. Hence, probability of M is going to give us number of required outcomes, according to the definition of probability, divided by number of possible outcomes. The possible outcomes of two, of throwing two dice is 36. Now, we will cut this one to be 1 over 12. But in, in, in the examination, it is always better if that is not the final question, I mean the final answer, it's better for you not to cut so that you, it will be easier for you to add or to subtract. By the time you cut it now and say you get 1 over 12 here, because probability of M is not required. What is required is probability of M or probability of n, probability of n, of m or n. So it is better you don't cut, so that you will not be, you will not tie yourself up with finding LCM. Now, probability of n, we have how many elements in n? One, two, three, four, five, six. Number of required outcome is six, divided by number of possible outcomes. So that is six over 36. We are not asked to find probability of m, or probability of n, just probability of m or n. So please, it is advisable you do not cut. Now, probability of m or n, according to mutually, I mean, according to addition law of probability, says probability, it will give us probability of m plus probability of n, which will be 3 over 36 plus 6 over 36. They both have the same denominator. Hence, what do we do? We add up the denominator, and that gives us 9 over 36 which is 1 over 4. Note, probability problems must be reduced to its lowest term. Or if you know you are not good in cutting, just use your calculator to get it in decimal form. You will get your full mark. The last part of the question says, are M and N mutually exclusive? Yes, of course, they are mutually exclusive. Because if you look at this, this is M, 
and this is N. Is there an intersection? There is none. none. No member of M appears in N, and none of N appears in M. So that means that the M, uh, M intersection N is zero. And once there is no intersection, automatically they are both mutually exclusive events. Now, we go to example two, after the timeout. We are on the assignment segment. Having recalled what our teachers have taught us on probability generally, we know that for us to get A1 in mathematics, we have to be very, very friendly with past questions. It's not, mathematics is not about reading, please. It is about picking the question and work out the questions well. Now, this, I have these two for you as assignments. But for your take-home package, please remember the mathematics, the B part, I mean, this, uh, part two of mathematics is divided into two sections, part A, part B. Part A is five marks and five questions to answer all. Part B is eight questions to answer five. Remember, you are not expected to spend more than 12 minutes in part A, so be time conscious. And you are not expected to spend more than 18 minutes in part B. Each question in part A attracts eight marks. Each question in part B attracts 12 marks. So be wise. By the grace of the, by the, grace of the most high, your results shall be a glorious manifestation for Lagos State. Thank you.